the Supreme Court's going to do something this week that it almost never does. It's going to hear a challenge to a state law that is pretty similar to a law it has already overturned in a nearby state. Now this week the Supreme Court will hear a challenge to a Louisiana law that requires that abortion clinics have abortionists with admitting privileges at nearby hospitals. Now the logic from the state and from pro-life advocates is pretty simple. If an abortion procedure goes horribly wrong, they want to make sure that the doctor treating the patient is able to go with her to the nearby hospital and treat her there as well. Continuity of care. Abortion advocates argue that this is meaningless, it's pointless. There's no reason for a doctor to need to have admitting privileges, and they also argue that abortions never require that. Unfortunately, there are plenty of cases of women who go in for what they believe to be routine abortions, and they either have horrible complications or in some cases they even die. And It's terrible, and it's another reminder that abortion doesn't just hurt the child, it also in a lot of ways can hurt the mother as well. But the argument from the left is that this has already been settled, that in 2016 the Supreme Court already ruled that a Texas law that was pretty similar was unconstitutional. But this is where it gets interesting. The court has changed a lot since then, right? Not only has Ant Antonin Scalia's seat been replaced, but you also now have Brett Kavanaugh on the bench as well. So the question is, will the Supreme Court in just a couple of years reverse its own precedent? You don't see this a lot. You don't see justices willing to so openly, not only just take a case like this, but even insinuate that they're going to overturn precedent that's only three years old. It, it really, really doesn't happen all that often. And it shows that elections really do have consequences. As I said, in 2016, when Scalia's seat was vacant, Justice Roberts went along with the liberals on the bench, and he voted with them and killed the Texas law that, just like Louisiana's law, required that doctors who perform abortions have admitting privileges. We've seen new judges added to the bench, and now the issue is getting another chance before the Supreme Court. But this is really about a lot more than just whether the Supreme Court will overturn its own precedent. The question is, are we going to live in a country where abortion clinics are not required to really abide by any medical standards? No one is arguing that states do not have the right to set the medical standards of clinics within its boundaries. Right? If a state says that uh, like a urgent care clinic has to have a hallway wide enough for a hospital gurney or a, a EMT gurney to get through, the state has every right to make those requirements. Right? That's part of the licensing procedure. But as we've seen across the country, as states try to impose these pretty common sense regulations on abortion clinics and setting these requirements for licensing, the clinics themselves have argued that this is nothing but an end around to try and get around um, Roe v. Wade and ban abortions through overregulation, which is interesting because you don't hear Democrats talking about this when they talk about guns, right? Democrats are willing to go out there and, and propose 100%, 200%, 300% tax increases on guns and ammunition without any care for the effect. You don't see them make that argument. But as soon as conservatives start advancing, um, this kind of agenda, making sure that, okay, if abortion clinics are going to exist, then they need to be safe. The staff needs to be well-trained and they have to have admitting privileges. As soon as you start making that argument, the left argues, oh, whoa, they're, they're, this, is just, this is just an end around around Roe v. Wade. Now, in, in some cases, it, it probably can be, right? I, I don't speak for the legislators who passed this law in Louisiana or the ones who passed it in Texas. I'm sure that a lot of them were pro-life and want to see um, abortion made a thing of the past. But that doesn't change the fact that the states have the rights to set these kinds of um, requirements for medical clinics to maintain their licenses, right? So it's going to be interesting. As I said, one, the Supreme Court shouldn't even be taking this case, shouldn't even be hearing this case. If we want to go by precedent, the Supreme Court almost never overturns its own ruling this close um, to the last one. And that kind of makes me feel like they're going to go the pro-life route here. They're going to go with the state of Louisiana. Or maybe maybe we're wrong. Maybe this is just John Roberts trying to, to say, hey, it doesn't matter if new judges have been added to the bench. We're not going to change this. It'll be interesting to see because 
the argument in my mind that the state does have the right to set these requirements is bogus. Right? The state absolutely has the requirement, has the ability to require clinics to have certain medical standards. What you're probably going to hear is you're probably going to hear a lot of arguments that it's not possible for these doctors to have admitting privileges, that there are no hospitals nearby, um, or that they are not qualified for the privileges, which is an interesting argument in itself um, to say that a doctor should have the right to perform what amounts to surgery um, without the ability to do so in a hospital. So this is going to be an interesting one to watch. We're going to keep you guys posted as this works. We'll probably post another video um, once the audio from the hearing comes out so we can actually hear what the different justices are saying kind of get a feel for their questions and where they might be falling on this issue so when that comes out we're going to post a follow-up video and let you guys know because this is this is shaping up to be potentially one of the biggest pro-life cases in decades um, if the supreme court upholds this louisiana law you're going to see abortion clinics go out of business. And, and that is not to say that this is designed to do that. What that is to say, though, is that these abortion clinics have been allowed to operate at such low standards of care. They have essentially been unregulated because states have been so fearful of regulating them um, that they haven't been forced to really, um, to really upgrade their, their facilities and upgrade their staff. So if this does pass, if the Supreme Court actually does um, uphold this law, you're going to see around the country states starting to enact similar laws. And you're going to hear people cry foul that abortion clinics are going out of business. But if a clinic goes out of business because it cannot meet state-obligated standards of care, then no one should have been going into that clinic to begin with. And that's not just for abortion clinics. That's for urgent care. That's for everything. If a state cannot maintain a standard of care equal to above or above the minimum prescribed by the state licensing boards, then that clinic should not exist. And just because that clinic happens to perform abortions does, should not protect it from having to shape up, from having to actually care about its patients and provide quality health care, which, I mean, abortion isn't health care, but you know what I mean. So again, as this case works its way through the courts, as we hear the oral arguments come out, which they will release. The Supreme Court never releases video, only ever um, the written transcript and audio recordings. When that comes out, we will provide an update video and let you know where the different justices stand.